Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all here today. Well, the reason I didn't um, have Mitch say what it is that I do is because it's kind of obvious uh, looking at me what I do. It's kind of annoying having a job that everyone guesses what I do right away. And I'll give you a little bit of a, a hint, um, something like this. <laughs> Uh, it's obvious that I'm an opera singer. You just look at me and you think, she must be an opera singer. Um, <laughs> you know, there is a stereotype about opera singers and their appearance, and we're going to get to that in a second. But um, I wanted to start with you about the phenomena of the human voice and how exciting it can be and how it's all within us, but we're not always engaging in it in a way that um, could not only impact ourselves better in life, but impact everyone around us. Some of you are saying, well, my voice is so off key that I would impact people in a negative way, but the point is it's this freedom of expression. Uh, when you go to a grocery store or a Walmart, um, you might sometimes come across a baby in that store that's not very happy. And um, you will probably know that that baby's not very happy because it will be sure to let everybody in that store know uh, with this amazing ability to create such amount of sound from this tiny little body, if you think about it. Uh, it's really quite, quite magical. And what does this baby have besides an absolute vulnerability, first of all, an openness, and it just has two little vibrating mucous membranes like the rest of us, but somehow it's tapping into that in order to create this piercing sound that is hitting right to everybody else in the grocery store. We're sort of tuned to, um, to respond to this. We're tuned to key into this. Now, um, our lives are a bit different now. If I were to um, the nice guy in the shades, I'm going to say, make as much sound as you want to. You've got five seconds, go. Okay, that was really good. So what is this inhibition that we might have? Now you guys know what's coming. How about um, the girl with the peach scarf? Ready? Five seconds. Okay, you know, and, and this is great. That was a great attempt. I love the first one the best. I mean, that, that was truly to my point, is we are told as we grow older not to make a lot of noise, right? Even toddlers, we say, look, honey, you're being too loud. Shh, don't make too much noise. Um, don't, don't cause a scene. So as we get older, we start to stifle this voice. And as an opera singer like me, I'm very fortunate because we have these moments when we get to, to stand up on stage and just make as much noise as we want. So for five seconds, as a group, this might be more tolerant. Let's everybody just make as much noise as they want for five seconds. One, two, three, go. <laughs> okay, and stop. That was excellent. Of course, this kind of reminds me of a concert or something, somewhere where we like to go to let that out. But in society, we kind of hone it in. But as opera singers, we're allowed to stand on stage and make as much noise as possible. But the point is, how do we get enough sound out of our body that we're verting kind of back to when we were a baby, where we can make a sound that cuts through the entire grocery store, that hits everybody's ear? Because a lot of fantastic musicians these days, you know, they're using a lot of assistance. They've got microphones, they've got speakers, they've got cables. It's sort of taking a lot of the work of the projection, it's doing that for them. Whereas if you're an opera singer, you have to realize you have to get up on that stage and cut over in a hundred piece orchestra and you have to have enough overtones and resonance to cut through that 5,000 seat house and still have the person in the very back of the room hear me or hear one, <laughs> it's not all about me, hear an opera singer from the back. And how do you really do that? Because it's not about loudness. I can go, ah, and scream and have this tension in my throat, and it's not going to resonate. But I can have a resonating, vibrating column that all of a sudden, for some reason, is going to hit the ear. And it's all a matter of freeing yourself. Freeing yourself just like a baby is totally free, not inhibited. They don't have these protections that we always, as adults, find ourselves um, holding in. The larger 
opera singers, perhaps they have a little bit of groundedness. They have something, and, and this is not offensive, it's just, it's just a physical thing. They've got something pulling them down all the time. They can gauge way down into their pelvic floor, which is where we have to get in order to use our entire vibrating air column, which is our body. So if our body is our instrument, if you think about it, the vocal cords aren't the thing making the sound. That's as if you were to take um, the mouthpiece of a clarinet or a saxophone and blow into it. It would make maybe a high-pitched sound, but the warmth and beauty of the sound comes when you connect it to the rest of the instrument. Well, it's the same thing for the human voice. So how do we find ourselves, how do we find the ability to tap all the way down into the bottom? Um, now, I sang with San Diego Opera Chorus for about 10 years, and when I wanted to develop my solo career a bit more, I sought out one of the conductors who was visiting from Italy, and I asked him to listen to me sing. And um, Maestro Eduardo Mueller, and he said to me, you're not the singing with your whole voice. You must the singer with your whole voice. So I, I tried singing louder, and he said, no, 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 don't push. Sing with your whole voice. And I had no idea what he's talking about, and that became my quest. Um, I was very fortunate to have met a fantastic teacher. I thought I was going up to learn how to sing with him. His name is Michael Trimble. He had a fantastic career in Germany and taught in New York for 40 plus years, and his singers were at the Met and La Scala and everywhere. But actually, when I went to study with him, he's retired now in, in Seattle, so I took three years um, and went to train with him. I didn't realize that I was actually training how to be a professional breather because the voice is there. We all have one. What we don't always know how to do is tap into the breath, get it all the way down. So my non hola voice uh, was, I was kind of singing with this much, whereas, yeah, I'm tall. I've got a lot more to go. My diaphragm cannot only go down, it can go all the way back into the back of me. So what, just to give you a little bit of an idea of the, the training that an opera singer might do beyond the physical things of becoming actually an athlete, like having to do the swimming, having to do the yoga, having to play the wind instruments to get the body mass and the volume of air that it takes to vibrate and have a sound that can cut through. You also have to learn how to release all the tension that might stop that sound from vibrating. Um, an example of this is if you have a big bell and you ring the bell, it's, it could carry for, you know, all the way out into um, La Jolla Shores there. But if you just take your fingernail and touch the bell very gently, you could deaden that sound by half, like immediately, because you're deadening the, uh, the overtones and the vibrations. So this is the same with our body. We have to learn how to completely release it, not have anything affecting it, including tension in the jaw, holding your chin in, having the tongue funny. So, you know, opera singing is very, very complicated and not everybody has uh, the right guidance to know how to release all these tensions that are actually just trying to help you get through the music. But in all reality, all we have to do is learn how to get into the bottom of us. So one thing that we do in our instruction is to learn how to breathe and sing in yoga postures. If I breathe like this, who does yoga here? Anybody? Okay. So you know that if we bring the body to this position, the breath will go in the right place. That's what yoga is all about. It's tried and true. We put ourselves in these positions. The breath goes down deep. And the result is you're so tapped into your breath and your core and your pelvic floor that the voice kind of becomes free. So I can have an expression on my face that looks very pleasant. And I can even hold these funny pic positions. And I could go, ah! right? Can you guys do that? You know, I bet you could with enough practice like me. There's, uh, you know, other postures. We do a lot of this in yoga. But the, the true point of the impact that I was trying to summarize, and it's so hard to talk about singing um, in such a short amount of time because there's, there's so many phenomenal little details that it takes to be able to um, have a voice that cuts through like that. But I think the core of impact is that if you can really learn how to release your voice from such a central part of you, then it doesn't only make an impact on your own life because 
you have a freedom of expression that perhaps before you were a little inhibited, but now you know if someone was sitting in this audience, who's sitting in this audience as an opera singer? Anybody? Okay, ready? Make noise. Oh, okay, <laughs> no testing my theory. I was going to say, most opera singers, if they're sitting there and you say, go, make noise, they'd be like, ah! I mean, they're w waiting for that moment to make noise, you know? Okay, we comply to society too. But the ultimate goal is we, we want to have that ability. And once you know where to find it, where to get that power and where to find it inside of you, it releases so much. See, people love it. They're, I heard somebody coughing. That's great. People want to do it, I'm telling you. But they're a little bit scared. Um, so, so, and not only that, but it impacts other people. When you can sing that way, you go back to like when you're a baby and you have that open vulnerableness and all of a sudden people are moved to tears of joy. People are moved to their adrenaline goes. They want to they wanna sing as well and it pulls all this stuff out of people. But that's why I think when people think of opera and there are a lot of um, sort of uh, stereotypes about opera, we need to kind of strip those from us and start to realize what singers are affecting us and why. Have we ever thought that some singers maybe we don't like opera because they're not fully released. So I just want everybody, I think, like I don't know where the clock is. I could go on forever. So it's, it's time to go. So let's have everybody stand up really quickly if we can, okay? Okay? Now, to get a really, really, really deep breath, I want you to see if you can dangle towards your toes. Take a deep breath in your back and hold your breath as you come up, and I want you to sing this note. Okay, right? Ready? So everybody bend over, take a deep breath, and up, and go. Ah. Right, okay, so when you wake up in the morning, this is how you're going to make yourself have a smile on your face, and you're going to be confident, and you're going to go to everybody with a whole new perspective on life and all you have to do is go ah. 